Hi, this is Michelle from MinimaDesigns.com and today I'm going to give you a little peek behind the curtain. Recently I redesigned my own website and I'm going to show you why and how I made the changes that I did. There are a couple key reasons why I made some significant changes to my website. First, web designers are notorious for not keeping their own sites up to date, and I'm no exception. The last time I did a major update was almost a year ago, and there were a lot of things I needed to address. Second, I tend to treat my own website as a testing ground so that I can try what works and doesn't work with the latest techniques in web design. I base this redesign on the Parallax child theme for Genesis. This is a child theme that Genesis created that I then modified to meet my needs. Now, Parallax is a visual displacement technique, and you can see it when I scroll on my home page. Parallax will move objects at different rates than others. You can see how the text overlay is a little bit different from the background images. Now, Parallax is interesting and can add a bit of visual impact. Do I think it's right for every site? No, and it's best used in small doses. If you haven't seen it yet on the web, you'll probably start to see it on some new sites soon. Now, I didn't just change my website to change the look, though as a designer, that's often very tempting. I had some specific goals and strategies behind my changes. First, I wanted to clarify my site message, who I'm working with and what I offer. You can see I've clearly got my tagline, get noticed online, and my current offerings. Then I lead people to a work with me button that takes them to my services page. My second objective for the website redesign was to increase my newsletter signups. Now, I did a couple of things a little bit differently. Initially, when you go to a website, you'll often see the sign up right there front and center, but I chose to move it down just a little bit so that I could introduce someone to who I am and what I offer before asking for the sign up. Then when you slightly scroll, you'll see the opt-in area. Now, this is gonna depend on the size monitor you're on. If you're on a laptop, it'll probably be a little bit lower. Of course, if you're on a larger screen, it'll be higher. So the experience will differ based on the device that you're using. Now, scrolling down, there's my opt-in, and I've got my message here that I can easily change. And then if you scroll even further, I've added another opt-in area at the footer, and I'm tracking where I'm getting my signups. So in MailChimp or whatever email newsletter software you're using, there's usually an option to track the value of the different opt-in areas. It's important to start tracking some of these metrics so you can see what's working and what's not on your website so you can make modification. And it's important to note, your website is a living document. You should always be changing and modifying for the better. You can't just set it and forget it. It really, truly is a living thing. And the dirty little secret of web design, you're never really done with your website. So my third goal with this website redesign was to improve the mobile experience. And while the vast majority of my audience doesn't come via mobile devices, that is on the uprise. Currently, my site statistics indicate that about 20% of my audience comes initially on a mobile device. Again, your audience may vary. You really have to track your metrics again so that you can see what that's like. But it's definitely an audience I didn't want to discount. My previous mobile experience wasn't quite where I wanted it to be, so again, I wanted to make some modifications. Now again, I was using the Parallax child theme, and they had built in some responsive queries, which had already preset some of the options for me. Now I did modify some of the responsive settings to meet the needs of my revised design. And one way that you can test responsiveness is to actually resize your screen and you can see how things shift. Now, I added some things like this newsletter block I added and some other options that I added in, so I needed to make some modifications to the core code. Now, when testing responsiveness, it's okay to kind of do it this way, but I do highly recommend that you test on actual devices. So I always keep an iPad, I keep an iPhone, I have someone who has an Android, so I test on actual devices so I can get the true user experience. My next goal with the website redesign was to bring the design more in line with my own aesthetic. So again, I'm a designer, I'm always gonna be modifying and tweaking things. So I had already kind of set my core colors, but I wanted to kind of refine the aesthetic of my own website. So there's a few things I did to modify that. One, font choice. Font choice is really, really important. And I'll put some links in the tutorial below to the fonts that I actually used on the site. I'm a big fan of using Typekit, which serves up web fonts from Adobe. Uh, I pay for a license for that so that I can use that on my website. That's a great way to incorporate just a little bit of your own personality uh, into the website. The second thing that I did was use images. Images are such an important way to provide impact to your website. And you can see here, I've got a couple of images. They were from the same photo shoot. So it 
provides kind of a cohesive quality to the website. It feels consistent, the coloring is consistent, the look is consistent. That's what's gonna up the level of your website. Consistency is so important in terms of aesthetic. You can see how I was consistent in my use of fonts. Here I use the script font in the main photo on the sidebar. I'm using this other font for page titles and here. And then my body copy is slightly different as well. Now, I don't recommend using more than two or three fonts. They need to work together. And again, it needs to feel cohesive. Otherwise, it just feels like a big mishmash on your site. Rather than using a different font, you may consider just using a different weight of the font. You can see how the weight and size varies here where between the categories and then the actual categories where you can get more impact, but again, it still visually feels cohesive. You can see a slightly different variation when I go to the praise page, which is my client testimonial page. Now, I did a couple of things here just to make it pop out a little bit more. First, I put each testimonial into its own box, and I used a block quote, which allows me to go back and change this easier later. I made photos, which I then modified with CSS to put them in a circle. And then the other thing I did was I reintroduced that script idea. And you can see that here with the client name. One little note here, typically I will use web fonts wherever possible to make it easy to update and maintain the site. But this particular web font is very thin and I knew it wouldn't have the visual impact I needed. So I went ahead and made these graphics. I typically won't do that for a client site because I wanna keep it easy for them to manage. But in this case, I'll be managing my own site so I can make my graphics as I need them. You can see how that just little bit adds a really nice touch. It gives it kind of that handcrafted feel that I like to infuse into all of my websites. My next objective with my site was to actually show more of my work. So underneath my work with me, I've got my portfolio page. I'm always trying out a few different ways to showcase my portfolio. And this time I'm trying a new plugin, uh, which I'll link to below in the tutorial. I just wanted something simple and quick to add to that can easily show just large scale images of my work. So this one works great for me. The final objective for my site is not really something you can see. That is to actually speed up my website. So there's a lot of things you can do to speed up your site. The first thing that helped me was actually just changing my theme. The other theme that I had had some kind of bloated code in it. So when I started over with the parallax child theme, I was able to strip out any extraneous stuff that I didn't need. The second thing I did was remove any plugins that I wasn't using anymore. I was using a, an older portfolio plugin that was kind of slow and again, added to the bloat of the site. So this new plugin that I'm using for the portfolio works really, really well. Uh, the third thing I did was optimize my images even further. You'll notice I've got a couple of different blocks of color. Those are actually repeating graphics that are very small. That's another quick trick to add great impact without adding great load time. So you can see it up here, there's a slight pattern. And then in the footer as well, I've got a slight repeating pattern. Again, just a little bit of a visual flair that doesn't add a lot of time and impact to your site. I hope this review was really helpful for you. For more tips, tricks, and tutorials, come visit me over at minimadesigns.com. And if you visit me in the next two weeks, uh, it's currently February 13th, 2014. If you come over to my site and pop me a note, I'll send you info on how you can work with me for free this year. Thanks so much.